Hey guys, Miles here at Tactile Hive. If you've been considering carrying a firearm concealed, this video is going to be great for you. In this video, I'm going to cover seven things you should consider before applying for a concealed carry permit. Tip number one, really build familiarity with your firearm platform and know the safety rules like the back of your hand. When I mention knowing how to manipulate your firearm, I'm not necessarily talking about how to be able to shoot fast and accurately and shoot long distances. I'm talking more about manipulating your weapon, knowing when it's unsafe, when it's not unsafe, knowing how to release a magazine, insert a magazine, things like that. So it's just a basic functionality so that you're more confident when you're handling your firearm in a class or God forbid an actual deadly conflict. And handling your firearm is going to allow you to practice the four firearm safety rules, which are number one, always point your gun in a safe direction. Number two, treat every firearm as if it were loaded. Number three, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. And number four, know your target and what's beyond. If you don't know how to safely manipulate your firearm and you don't know the safety rules by heart, then that should be a sign that you're probably not ready to get a concealed carry permit. Tip number two, take a beginner firearm course. There are a lot of people who get a concealed carry permit and have never taken a formal class. They just do the minimum to get their actual license. And depending on where you are, what state, you may not have to really do much at all to get that permit. Some people also think they know how to operate their firearm because they learn from their friends or they shot on their own and they're, you know, it's some in the desert, wherever it is. But it's very different when you get organized instruction from people who have a lot of experience. You're going to pick up a lot of things and most likely you're going to realize some things that you were doing are not necessarily the right way and perhaps even dangerous. So it's very important to go to a beginner class so you pick up the fundamentals of marksmanship. You are going to instill even better habits and you're going to get more practice time. I already talked about learning how to manipulate your firearm, but this time you're going to learn how to manipulate your firearm in different ways, as well as with the mindset that now you're going to be shooting. So that is very important to build your foundation. Tip number three, try a variety of pistols. I hear stories of someone purchasing a firearm, they've never tried any other firearm out there, and they use that firearm to add to their concealed carry permit. You never know, you want to try other platforms, other brands, other models, because you might perform better and be more comfortable with certain uh, pistols out there. You may be the type who already have a firearm and you're like, I'm just going to add that to my concealed carry permit or I'm going to use that in my concealed carry permit. And that might be the case, that's fine. But we still think you should still test lots of different firearms because you're gonna find one, you might find one that's better suited for your body type and your style. So rather than force yourself into using a firearm that you might not be very comfortable or you might not perform well with, go to the range, rent out, you know, don't, don't spend a lot of money buying new firearms without trying them. Go to the range, rent out some firearms, try different ones and find out which is best for you. Then take that and most likely that's going to be the one, you know, whatever performs best, that's probably the one that you wanna to add to your concealed carry permit. So that's tip number three, try out different pistols so you figure out what's going to work best for you. The fourth tip is to research your state reciprocity rules. When you get a concealed carry permit based on the state that you live in, you might be able to use that particular permit from your state and be allowed to carry your firearm in other states. In contrast, you might not be allowed. So for example, I have a, Cal a CCW or a concealed carry uh, permit in California, and I might think, okay, it's, it's fine in Arizona, or I might know that, oh, it's fine in Arizona, I can take it over there, but in my mind, I might think it's allowed in Illinois, but it is not. So it's important to understand that so you don't break any laws, you don't get into trouble, and worse, get your concealed carry permit revoked because you did not know the rules. So it's as easy as going to a website. There's, there's tons, you can actually Google search concealed carry firearm reciprocity laws and things like that, and you're going to get a whole list. A lot of sites will tell you where you're allowed to carry and where you're not. So make sure you do your due diligence. Tip number five is to make sure you dive into the details about 
the laws of your state when it comes to carrying concealed. For example, can you carry your firearm at a bar or can you carry your firearm at a restaurant that serves alcohol? Can you bring your firearm into a, at a park? Things like that. Once again, similar to the previous tip, you don't want to get caught in a situation where you're supposed to understand. It's your responsibility to understand the laws. And if you get caught, you can't say, you know, I forgot or I didn't know. You need to know that before getting your permit. Because if you don't, you can get in trouble, as well as you might get your firearm revoked, right? And your concealed carry permit revoked. So once again, do the due diligence and understand what are the laws of your specific state. The sixth tip before applying for your concealed carry permit or before getting it is to understand what challenges or obstacles you might run into with a concealed carry permit. You might think that now that you have the permit, you can carry this firearm anywhere you want to. So it combines with tip number five, understanding your state laws. But when I say challenges and obstacles, I'm talking more personal to your own life, not in, in general as to the state as a whole. I'll give you an example here. So my daughter goes to school in a government building and I cannot bring my firearm into that government building. There's no way I can't check it in anywhere. So I need to understand that for me, during my drive, during my walk to bring my daughter to school, I won't have a firearm. So I need to understand that and accept that. There may be other circumstances or situations, particular or specific to your life, where you might not be able to have that firearm. So think about all of that before you get your permit or before you start thinking, you know, you have, maybe you have your permit already, consider that because that is going to affect where you are able to carry and perhaps even the convenience of carrying a firearm in your life. The last tip is something that's not talked about a lot, but I'm going to share this tip and we recommend it because we have put a lot of students, concealed carriers, through our force and force class. So the last tip is to actually take a force and force class. If you're not familiar with what force and force is, I'll leave a link below to an article that I wrote. It is essentially putting yourself in realistic scenarios where you're shooting non-lethal rounds. You're using real firearms, but you're not going to get hurt with these firearms. And you are put in situations where you're going to have bad guys or one bad guy in different realistic civilian type scenarios and you're gonna have a lot of stress, you might get shot back, There's and the whole purpose of Force and Force is problem solving, decision making under stress. And a lot of people realize that without taking that Force and Force class, they have a false sense of confidence and don't really understand the true responsibility behind carrying a firearm. It really is something that is eye-opening to a lot of our students. So if you have the means and you have a class around your area to do force and force, absolutely take it. Even if you just take it once. It's not about becoming John Wick. That class is not gonna teach you how to be a one-man army. That's not what it's about. It's understanding what real conflicts are like. And if you have a firearm, you have a duty to understand what they are really like and what you might get involved in. So if you have the chance, take a force and force class. So there you have it, seven tips to consider before getting your concealed carry permit. I hope they're helpful. Let me know if you have a tip in the comments below. Please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.